So it's now been about a week since I took over this sourdough culture, or starter rather, from my friend. Um, and as you could see, it's active. So the difference between active and dormant sourdough culture is that when it is active, it's um, constantly fermenting and you'll feed it one tablespoon to, you know, half a cup of uh, whole wheat flour, depending on how much you need um, and how much bread that you wish to yield. And you'll match that with an equal ratio of water. Hi, so... I'm just in the process of making my sourdough, but I actually need to let the dough rise for between 4 to 12 hours. It allows for the sourdough to really achieve its flavor. Um, so I'm going to go to school, but before that I'm going to make the dough so I can let it rise through the day. Uh, the ingredients are fairly simple. I'm going to be adding 2 cups, or actually 5 to 6 cups of the whole wheat flour. Uh, this is just basic, but it doesn't have any additives. It's uh, just what it is. Um, I have some Vancouver Island sea salt, and I'll be adding, I believe, a teaspoon. Um, and this is really good stuff. This is really rich in flavor, so that will be really nice for the quality of the bread. Um, and I had to make shift filtered water, so I actually boiled down some water and put in some ice cubes. Uh, Hopefully those are both sterilized enough for this bread making experiment. And lastly, I have my sourdough starter. I actually just measured out three cups of the whole wheat flour. Um, what I need to add to this is two cups of the sourdough starter and the water. And I believe that this recipe is... Uh, fairly spot on, but I also think that uh, the measurements are kind of intuitive as well. Um, something that I find um, when making doughs is you just really need to get it and play it out to the right consistency. You don't have to be so worried about the measurement to the gram as much as the, uh, the texture and the consistency of the dough because you really do want it to rise. So I'm going to be adding two cups of the sourdough starter. It is fairly liquidy, which is good. And this is perfect because this is actually two whole cups that I've yielded from this culture, which is actually kind of unfortunate because I wanted to make more bread, but I'm just counting. And then I'll just add one cup of water and I'll just wash out the remaining sourdough culture. So. Two deeds to fulfill your needs. And then this all just mixed together. So I'm actually going to add the tablespoon of salt now. And now, as you can see, the texture is more doughy. When I first put it in, it was quite uh, liquidy, but I actually um, have just let it sit for a minute. So this part, <laughs> I've kind of resisted sticking my hands in here, but... Um, I, mean, I just added half a cup of flour, and I'm going to have to get my hands dirty. And yeah, just really just kneading this dough to make sure it really binds together, and I combined all of these very simple but uh, imperative ingredients found in this recipe. So I'll add another half a cup. So this is my final product. It looks pretty decent. Um, and I, the last step is I just need to transfer it into a clean bowl, but I just wanted to show kind of what the workspace looked like, so voila. So I'm just going to let it rise for, I think, about 12 hours until I get home. Um, and I just put it into a clean uh, pan, which is what it recommended, and I just need to cover it with a clean dish rag. Bye! So, let's see, this is the final product of the sourdough, and it ended up being super beautiful. It's about, like, two hands worth, I got pretty tiny hands, but about two hands worth in size, um, so it did expand a bunch, and I'm actually going to do it San Francisco style. Fun fact, they have one of the highest acclaimed terroirs in the world as far as uh, the flavor complex of sourdough bread, which I think is pretty interesting. But I'm just going to add 
one egg white to just give it a nice uh, shiny texture up top and I'm gonna put some uh, X slants to make sure that the rest of the bread is able to breathe and it doesn't uh, crack too much around the perimeter. So that's the next step. I'm actually going to be cooking this sourdough in a cast iron skillet. Uh, a lot of recipes don't call for this, but um, the kind friend who gave me the sourdough culture actually recommended that I clean my cast iron and I oil it. So I just put some oil in it and I'm about to spread it in a second. All right, the time has come. This is my incredibly janky sourdough loaf. And I put some slits in there to, again, allow some air flow through the bread. So I'm super blessed, and this loaf actually came out perfect. It's hard to tell with my shadow, but as you can see, there's the X, so the bread really didn't have any cracks as far as I know. The outside is hard. Um, I kind of like jabbed this hole in the side to see if it was ready. And uh, a way that you can tell when sourdough bread is actually baked is the edges kind of peel away from the uh, rim of the cast iron. So these did, and it's nice and golden brown. I'm super stoked to eat it.